Hi, uh, my name is David Sparling. I'm um, the newest member of the leadership team here at the library. Um, I'm the head of IT. Um, it's, it's a really exciting opportunity um, in my first few weeks to get involved in these awards. Um, and, and it's a real honour to, to, to take part. Um, these awards um, are, are for the staff. Um, so it's what the staff have contributed in terms of innovation and particularly innovation utilising our digital collections. The library itself, I think, is a fantastic organisation to be part of. Um, it's a wonderful place to actually meet lots of very different people and get lots and lots of different ideas. And, and also there's some fantastic beards out there as well, which is, uh, which is always nice. <laughs> so firstly, if we, we just come on to the, the uh, digital scholarship team. Um, so just a little recognition of, of what the scholarship team do. Um, they're a cross-disciplinary team of curators, researchers, um, but with particular focus on, on how we use and how we're more creative with our digital collections. Um, and, uh, and Adam's with us today and, and, and running that team. Uh, and it really actually starts to dive into what we have digitally and, and, and how we can use it, um, which I think is incredibly powerful. Um, the next piece was a, bit, was a big selling piece from Adam's team. That's way, way, way too many syllables for me to read out. So I'll let you read that yourself. Um, so, and I want to go on to the, the, uh, the nominees that we have for, um, for the staff awards. Um, so firstly, this is um, Voice Bank, um, which has been developed by um, Johnny Robinson um, for a project which pulls together digi the digital audio collections of around 10,000 international voices. Um, and you're probably wondering why Mr. Tickles just appeared on there. Um, so one of the challenges was, was to um, really pull together the different um, dialects and different voices from different areas of the UK um, and they had to start with something that was easy to read. Um, and so they would get that consistent um, words, but then getting different intonations and, and different vowel sounds. Um, apparently, Mr. Snow was the uh, leader at one stage, um, but they then uh, discovered that uh, Mr. Tickle um, was, the, was the preferred text of choice to be able to, uh, put to, to uh, pull out all of those different vowel sounds from around the UK. Um, another part of the project was also to get users to donate a word. Um, personally, I'd be throwing in the word ginnel, uh, which I can see is lost on most of the southern audience. Uh, and maybe I'll move on from that, from my, uh, from my own personal uh, Yorkshire dialect. Um, un uh, unfortunately, one of my uh, colleagues is from Holland. He, uh, he could have just represented that in person. He's on holiday, unfortunately, this week. <laughs> Mr. Tickle, it was a warm Sunday, sunny morning. In his small house at the other side of the wood, Mr. Tickle was asleep. Mr. Tickle, it was a warm Sunday, sunny morning. In his small house at the other side of the wood, Mr. Tickle was asleep. You don't know there was such a thing as Mr. Tickle, did you? Well, there is. Tickles are small and round and have arms that stretch and stretch and stretch. Extraordinary long arms. Mr. Tickle was fast asleep. He was having a dream. It must have been a very funny dream because it made him laugh out loud. That woke him up. And he sat up in bed, stretched his extra extraordinarily long arms and yawned an enormous yawn. Mr. Tickle felt hungry, sir. Do you know what he did? He reached out one of his extra extraordinary long arms, opened his bedroom door, reached down the stairs, opened the kitchen door, reached into the kitchen cupboard, opened a biscuit tin, took out a biscuit, brought, up, brought it back upstairs and through the bedroom door and back to Tickle in a bed. As you can see, it's very useful indeed having arms as long as Mr Tickle's. Mr Tickle munched his biscuit. He looked out of the window. Today looks very much like a tickling day he thought to himself so later that morning after mr tickle had made his bed and cooked his breakfast he set off through the through the wood as he walked along his he kept his eyes very wide open looking for someone to tickle looking for anyone to tickle eventually mr tickle came to to a school there was nobody about so reaching up his extraordinary long arms to a high window ledge. Mr. Tickle pulled himself up and peeped in through the open window. He could see a classroom. <laughs> that was a lot better than when I last read Mr. Tickle. I think I fell asleep, in fairness, when I read it. So, um, so the next one is uh, the British Library time lapse films. Um, this was a really interesting one. So uh, Elizabeth Hunter and Carol Norman developed this. Um, and this was showing how the, we restored um, um, 18th century flags. 
Um, and since then, we've, we've put six films out there on YouTube um, and have been incredib incredibly popular. So the, the Clank Atlas um, restoration work has received over 30,000 views on YouTube, which really demonstrates um, a, a really important part of what the library does. The next one was, around, uh, was Picture in Canada. Um, so Phil Hatfield and uh, Joan Francis uh, developed this project um, from, from previous work on, on in digitization and, and, and uh, images that we've had from uh, a collection of colonial copyright photographs. Um, so the output is an interactive map where they've mapped the photographs across, as you can see on the, on the, on the image there, they've mapped the photographs across um, Canada. Um, this one received no ex external funding um, and we were able to transform and, and access and understand a large part of the collection. Um, and this really shows how, how the British Library is, is not only um, you know, distinctly involved in text, but also non-text uh, parts of our collection. The next one was the Web Archiving Week. Uh, so um, Olga, who, um, it, in fact, we, we've just about managed to get the right size font to get all of Olga's title on the page. Um, so um, Olga co-organized a, a, a fantastic um, international event with uh, Professor Jane Winters, um, the, the Web Archiving Week. So this brought together um, other national, international um, web archivers to really pull together and, and, and understand the, 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 um, the joint challenge, really, of, of web archiving and web pre preservation. Um, altogether, there were 45 participants from all over the world involved in a hackathon. Um, and through the conference, um, the, the really looks at research methodologies across many disciplines um, and, and several presentations um, to, to, to cover, really, the, the massive challenge of, of digital conservation. Um, and, uh, and a note goes to Andrew Jackson as well there, who's in my team. Hey, Andrew. Um, um, who, who also um, uh, put, a, put a significant effort into, into the success of that. Um, the workflow for, um, for Process and Digital Born Archives. Um, so this was work done by um, Jonathan and Eleanor, who've um, pulled together a, a workflow to ensure that we, um, when we're taking in uh, digital born um, content, uh, that we, we we make absolutely sure we tag everything and make everything clear so people can, uh, can extract that content. And uh, there's very few organizations internationally who are, who are providing access to their, their uh, digital born archives as we are. Um, the, uh, the British Library Universal Viewer. Uh, so um, Adrian, Andy, uh, Peter, Mia and Tom, um, they've been nominated for, for a browser-based uh, Universal Viewer. And this, this has been developed using open source software so we can actually um, utilize through a browser and display all various types of uh, images and, and also sound content um, to, to present within the browser. It really helps us make our um, content much more accessible um, across the internet. The Asian and African Studies blog. Um, so Ursula Annabel and, and Malini have been nominated for this. Um, this was an outstanding uh, way of letting people know about our, our Asian and African collections. Um, and many of the, those digital items have been, uh, have been advertised within there. Um, so the, the prints and drawings team, um, Picture in Places. Um, so this was a new website that, that, um, that the guys put together um, really to discover the role and history of uh, topographical views, maps and text together um, through over 500 examples from the British uh, Library's collection um, with lots of fresh research, you know, we're at 100 articles and films uh, and which has been used for academic conferences. Uh, two centuries of Indian print. Um, so this is a pilot project um, which is digitizing 3,000 rare Bengali printed books uh, and is enhancing our, our catalog records um, to, to automatically search and discover um, Bengali type. Um, it's well, they've done is some real groundbreaking work because they've, they've been doing OCR um, of, of Bengali text, uh, which has never been done before. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and clearly, it's a, it's a big breakthrough of, of digitizing Bengali. So the, um, the virtual tour of the British Library. This is a, a 360 degree views of the library. Um, so what we can see is to, to really give a panoramic view of the fantastic building um, over the road. Um, and, and really is around a case study of a user who can't access the library. Um, they can actually, actually see and experience uh, the, the fantastic building. Uh, geospatial data application and services. Um, so this was a, a, a pretty significant piece of work to, for a tool upgrade. So 
legal deposit maps that we can see in the reading rooms, and we can actually start to overlay some of those maps and, and, and see them in parallel um, that's not been done before. Um, and particularly around our legal deposit uh, maps, which are copyrighted, we can actually start to map together uh, images that have not been mapped together before. Uh, the, the Battle of Passchendaele posters. Um, so Jeremy Nagel and, and Margaret Makepeace have submitted posters um, uh, on the British Library's Untold Lives Twitter account. Uh, and, and what they were using to, to pull these posters together was, were images and content um, to, to, um, to put that creative picture together of, um, reflecting Passchendaele. Okay, so um, we've got, um, we've got um, three awards in this category. Um, and like I said before, it's really, really important for us to recognise this. Uh, the library really prides itself in being a, an innovative institution. It certainly was one of the things that attracted me to come to the library. Um, and, and so these, these awards are, 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 you know, really important for our staff. Um, so um, the, the winner of this section was... Um, the, the biggest thing the judges liked about this entry was was a wonderful way to, to show um, really the incredible work that we do at the British Library um, and, and actually be able to, to surface that. Uh, so the honourable mention is for the British Library time-lapse films. <laughs> Elizabeth and Carl. Basically, it's just a big thanks to all the staff and the managers that allow us to do this and to give us access to all this work. Um, we just really want to show that uh, all the work and the time uh, behind the actual viewing of these subjects and the digital images that they show. And uh, shameless plug that if anyone's got anything interesting that they think would uh, actually be good for time, that's just come and see us in the way afterwards. So, thank you very much. Cheers. <laughs> Painted silk. Yeah, so we're going to see a short film that we did about the uh, silk wrapper. Okay, so the, uh, the runner-up in the staff awards. Um, for this one, we were, we were really impressed um, by the pioneering work um, that had been done with this and, and, um, and, and Phil the, was the first curator, actually, from the British Library to work on digital collection and uh, to, to upload onto, onto Wikimedia. Um, the runner-up is a Picture in Canada and the interactive map. Unfortunately, Phil can't be with us today. Yeah, the one lesson I've learned from this is when you're nominating your team for awards, get them to save the date. Um, <laughs> so I, actually, I was really pleased this, this, is, this is the one that got the, got, got the award because um, it ties really well with digital scholarship. I think the support of the digital scholarship team in awareness raising um, and in training through the training schemes to kind of give us the knowledge of the open source tools and methods that we can use. Um, to help make our data more available, more open, and to be able to share it better. Um, Joan and Phil are going to tell you a bit more in, in, in a video about what they did and the project. What they probably won't tell you is that none of this was kind of scheduled into their performance objectives or anything like that. They did this off their own back, really because it was something they saw as part of the kind of mission of curatorial teams to kind of use, go out and use these new tools and new data to make things more available. And they also just made it look so effortless as well. So um, I've got a film to play, which I'll probably mess up now. Uh, ah. Hello, my name is Joan Francis. I work for the Contemporary British Collection. 
And I'm Phil Hatfield, I'm lead curator for digital mapping collections here at the British Library. It's a great pleasure to receive the Runners Up Award for the British Library Staff Awards this year. We found out this morning, we're still cock a hoop about it, uh, and it's just wonderful to have really been considered as part of the nominations with such a great series of projects and a great series of um, potential candidates that are part of this work. The projects that we've received the Runners Up Award for actually began all the way back in 2012. Um, back in 2012, I worked with our Wikipedian residence, Andrew Gray, to digitise a collection of Canadian colonial copyright photographs here at the British Library, pass them into the public domain, and make them available on Wikimedia Commons. The project really started a lot of our collaborations that have come up with Wikimedia since, and it's been great to see the amount of work and the amount of development that's gone into that collaboration subsequently. But when it came to picturing Canada, what we really wanted to do was start thinking about how can we push this project further? How can we make it easier to find some of the fascinating content that's part of the collection? And how can we also start opening up some interesting research questions that come out of this? So what we decided we wanted to do was map the collection. We have great metadata for the photographs. We have some really interesting titles that invariably has place details in it. And so Joe has spent the last 18 months now working to find place names and attribute geo-coordinates to those place names for the photographs so that that can then be added into a spreadsheet, uploaded into Google Fusion Tables, and transformed into a map like you see here. The map becomes a wonderful finding aid for users who want to find photographs about their location in Canada or a particular location in Canada that they just happen to be interested in. Um, it becomes an interesting way of burrowing into the collection, finding out what's there. It will soon be going live in a sort of final version on Wikimedia Commons and also on the British Library website. So it will be available for all of you to use, to click on the points that are found around the map and then be transported out to the original image on Wikimedia Commons. One interesting thing that also comes out of the project is that the map opens up some really interesting research questions, some really interesting what can we do next about it. And basically what we've started to see is the map produces some of the economic logic for the collection. It shows us that urban areas around Canada and also the railroads were some of the main drivers behind photographic production in Canada at this time. And that's really fascinating. So we're looking forward to the final version of the project going live. We're looking forward to all of you working with it. And thank you once again for the Runners Up Award and for the nomination. And, uh, and congratulate Phil for uh, pulling in uh, from the British Library collection uh, a phrase last used in the 1920s. Um, so, uh, and, and last of all, but of course not least, is, is, uh, is the winner of this award. Um, the judges really felt this was a, a groundbreaking project and, and um, not only, you know, truly innovative, um, but also demonstrating the best of, of um, how various um, departments in the library can work together um, to, to develop something, um, you know, really new. Um, and the winner is um, two centuries of, uh, of Indian print. there's a lot of us it's taken a big team um, to put this project together so um, just a big thank you actually first of all to the British Library to the many departments that have helped us to put this project together um, I'm Noor Sobers Khan the PI for the project but really I can't take any credit at all for the technological innovations that have come out of, of two centuries of Indian print it's really all due to the work of our project manager, Alia Carter, our project cataloger, Priyanka Basu, our project curator, Lely Dean, our project support officers, Megan and Laurence, and actually our digital curator, Tom Derrick, who couldn't be here today. And he's really the one who led our Bengali OCR project. So actually, I just would like to say that it's, it's, a, it's been a huge team effort. And um, if we could somehow collectively speak in front of the microphone, that would be um, 
the best thing, but I'll do my best to thank everyone. So um, well, you've got a bit of a, uh, an introduction to the project previously, but just to give you a sense, we're digitizing um, a large corpus of early printed Bengali books. And out of that corpus, we are um, releasing PDFs um, online of the quarterly lists, for instance. And I think the most relevant thing for, for this context is that we have um, run an OCR competition that will, in theory, it will allow um, the text to be read by, by machines. Um, although we got about, I think, 60 57% readability, so we're going to actually run another competition to get it up to industry standard of 90%, so continue you know, watching our project for what we do next. Um, I should also mention that we find out about the extension of our funding on Wednesday, so um, I should acknowledge you know, a huge thanks to our funders, the Newton Fund and the AHRC, for, for bringing us this far. The project started in 2016, and we are hoping to extend it for another year, and we'll do the same treatment to us Assamese and Sileti, so another two languages also um, being digitized, going online, having searchable catalog records, and also um, you know, another OCR competition for those languages as well. Would anyone else like to, have I missed anything? It's a lot to cover. We also do a lot of outreach work, as you can see in the pictures on the side. And oh, I, f I should mention also a huge thanks to our project partners, Jadavpur University in Calcutta, um, Shristi University in Bangalore, and so as. Um, and our Indian partners especially have provided us with a lot of input and, and expertise, um, especially on the, the digital humanities. Um, one thing I should mention is that with OCR, we, what we're hoping to do is open up a range of digital humanities research questions for South Asian material that hasn't really been asked so far, so that you could under take things like topic modeling. Um, we're also hoping to do geo-mapping of the uh, printers and publishers of these books. So you can ask sort of digital humanities questions of this material that previously you couldn't had it not been digitized and had we not undertaken the OCR. So that's it from me. Anyone else? No? Okay, <laughs> big thanks to the team. And uh, any questions? Was there a... We're good? Running short? Okay, well, thank you very much. And thanks... <laughs>